Hey, welcome back everyone. Today we are looking at the Vengeance Demon Hunter for the Shadowlands. As usual, I'll be covering the key changes from BFA, the new talents, legendaries, covenants, as well as the soulbind conduits. Hopefully my insights from the beta will help you decide if you want to main a Vengeance Demon Hunter come Shadowlands. Let's get started with the changes first. One of the biggest changes is the introduction of Fell Devastation as a baseline ability. This is now an additional Fury spender, and by the way, they are renamed Pain to Fury for the Shadowlands. It has some interesting interactions with some new talents, and with that, let's move to the second point, and that new talent that I'm speaking about is Demonic. Demonic is replaced gluttony on the talent tree which if you recall was basically a RNG based way of proccing metamorphosis. Now contrast this to demonic which basically allows you to enter metamorphosis for 8 seconds after you have finished using fell devastation. Given that fell devastation is a 45 second cooldown you can definitely now plan better around your metamorphosis rather than relying on RNG from gluttony. That is a very much feel good change and I think most demon hunters will be pleased with this. Now moving on to some bad news. Blizzard is keen to introduce a AoE target cap and that applies to Soul Cleave which is now capped at 5 targets. This 5 target cap also implies that you can't rely on Soul Cleave to hold aggro in AoE situations, instead you have to turn to Emolation Aura, Siege of Flame and even the Spirit Bomb talent to hold down mobs for your party. The next change, Demon Spikes have been buffed to give 75% of your agility as armor up from 60% in BFA. However the biggest change and probably the most worrying change for people is that corruption is going away come Shadow lands. Currently in 8.3, most Vengeance Demon Hunters are relying on Twilight Devastation and Lash of the Void in order to hold aggro in AoE situations. This goes back to a bit of the downside of the class toolkit which is without Spirit Bomb, Sigil of Flame as a baseline ability does too little damage to really hold down mobs and generate threat, and Emolation Aura faces the same limitations as well. Now on top of that, Soul Cleave now has a target cap which really funnels Vengeance Demon Hunters to take Spirit Bomb in your talent tree in order to generate threat but it does feel bad that you are now forced to make the decision so it's important to keep an eye out on the damage output for those abilities and see whether they'll be fine-tuned going into the launch. Now let's talk about talents. Abyssal Strike is probably still the default talent pick. Infernal Strike creates a sigil of flame when you land and its cooldown is reduced by 8 seconds. I think some people might argue that agonizing flames could see use. I think there's a case to be made for taking agonizing flames for a very niche build that I will cover later when we talk about conduits but having tested it on the beta it doesn't feel that great so I'm still leaning towards Abyssal Strike. Fell Blade is something that you can completely skip. It does generate additional fury for you but as a Vengeance Demon Hunters as you would know from BFA it is all about generating souls instead of fury so I will pass on this. Now let's talk about the tier 2 talents. Feast of Soul, Soul Cleave heals you for an additional percentage over time. Based on my testing the heal that I get from Soul Cleave is pretty much insignificant so this talent really doesn't matter in the long run, unless they significantly tweak the component of healing from Soul Cleave. Fallout is probably the default pick. Emolation Aura's initial burst has a chance to shatter soul fragments from enemies. This is likely to be the superior pick versus Burning Alive, where every 2 seconds Fiery Brand spreads to one nearby enemy. Now once again, there is a niche build that involves Burning Alive that I'll talk about later, but in a vacuum, I would lean towards Fallout. Let's move on to tier 3 now, and this is something I've already alluded to at the introduction. Spirit Bomb is more most likely to be the default pick because it gives you a significant increment in damage especially in AoE scenarios and the threat generation is something that you really need when it comes to mythic plus. Not only that, the healing component is also really sizable. I find it really hard to deviate away from Spirit Bomb right now on the beta. The, the only other talent in contention in this role is really Charred Flash. Emulation Aura damage increases the duration of your Fiery Brand by 0.5 seconds. And there is some synergies with Agonizing Flames from the first role where you're all about just single target mitigation but for general use I think Spirit Bomb is still the play. Just quickly touching on Infernal Armor here, armor values of Demon Hunters are generally really low so outside of your mitigation windows the pickup you get from this talent is marginal and when you have Demon Spikes up or Metamorphosis up you generally don't need the additional 20% to ensure you survive anyway so the value you get out of this in either scenario is marginal. Now let's talk about tier 4 talents. No surprise here I think Fracture is the default build. It replaces Shear and has two charges, every attack will shatter two lesser soul fragments from your target and it generates 25 fury. Currently on the beta, the playstyle seems to be generating as much souls as possible to be used with spirit bomb and from that perspective, fracture is the one that provides a lot of value in this role. I think some people would argue that feed the demon is worth looking at. Perhaps in scenarios where you take
take heavy physical damage in a very short window, you could definitely look into this talent. But other than that, I would lean towards Fracture. So rending is not something that I would consider. Next for tier 5 talents, these concern your sigils. Matic Plus will probably see sigils of chain being the default pick. The crowd control and ability to position mobs will be invaluable there. Concentrated sigil does grant a small increase in your DPS. But outside of Mythic Plus, I think the choice here is largely situational. Next up, we have tier 6 talents. I think Demonic will be the default pick here. Remember, this replaces Gluttony from BFA, which was really a RNG prop on when you would trigger Metamorphosis. Demonic now grants you more control over when you will enter Metamorphosis, and it lasts for 8 seconds after you have channeled Fell Devastation. Longtime Vengeance Demon Hunters players would know that Metamorphosis is a really huge defensive cooldown, and granting you the ability to control when you enter it is definitely invaluable. So Barrier does help you defensively, but the downside here is that it consumes soul fragments, while Demonic doesn't. And you would definitely want to save your souls for Spirit Bomb if that is the build that you're going for. Void Reaver on the other hand does give you a smoother damage mitigation pattern, but it is nothing like having Metamorphosis on Demand from Demonic. Let's talk about Tier 7 talents now. For the start of the expansion and for progression, I think Last Resort is the default talent. A cheat death for every 8 minute is invaluable for a tank. Ruinous Ball Work Fell Devastation heals for an additional 15% and 50% of its overhealing is converted into an absorb shield. In a vacuum, it sounds good, but remember, Demonic from the previous talent tree already grants you metamorphosis after fell devastation. So the defensive value on top of that seems to be in diminishing return. I would still prefer last resort. Bulk extraction could see play when you are very confident that you do not need a cheat there. For example, if you are carrying people in lower keys, bulk extraction might just be the play. Next up, let's talk about covenants. The Kiran covenant grants you Elysian Decree. It places a sigil at the target location that activates activates after 2 seconds, it detonates to deal arcane damage and shatter tree soul fragments from enemies. I think this is strong in mythic plus in AoE scenarios, but keep in mind in raids you're likely dealing with only single target, so definitely take that into consideration when you're picking your covenant. My personal preference is to go for a covenant choice that gives me more flexibility around single targets and AoE. Kiran covenant also grants you summon steward, it is a 5 minute cooldown, it brings you a vial of serenity that restores 15% of your health and remove certain debuffs. I think that the fact that this is on a 5 minute cooldown makes me feel like it is undertuned. I wouldn't ascribe too much value to Summon Steward here. Now let's talk about the Ventia Covenant. Sinful Brand brands an enemy with the mark of the Ventia, reducing their melee attack speed by 30% and casting speed by 30% on top of inflicting damage. If you activate Metamorphosis, it also applies Sinful Brand to nearby enemies. My initial thoughts is the casting speed and attack speed slow is really great for high level mythic plus. This could definitely negate certain dangerous mobs in mythic plus. It is meant to be a single target but it also has the flexibility to spread via metamorphosis and I definitely value that kind of flexibility when it comes to a covenant choice since I'm intending to both raid and do mythic plus. As it stands right now, I am leaning towards picking Ventia Covenant for my Vengeance Demon Hunter. The additional bonus is also Ventia grants you the Door of Shadows which is arguably the best covenant signature ability in PvE right now. It gives you a 35 yard teleport. As a tank in Mythic Plus, this could allow you to skip certain pools. On top of that, you could use it for positioning in raid encounters. Moving on to the Necrolord. Fodder of the Flame has a long tool tip, but essentially what it does is it gives you a slight buff to your damage and defensive capabilities when you stand in the pool of demon blood. I think the concept is interesting, but my only concern is, is it worth a 2 minute cooldown? And on top of that, you need to think about your positioning and standing within the pool of demon blood that makes this ability a bit less flexible, and so versus the Ventius, I would probably still lean towards the Ventius ability. Necrolot also grants you Flashcraft, where you channel for 4 seconds to build a shield that is equivalent to X% percent of your maximum health. In general though, channeling while tanking is a really bad idea because you are unable to dodge or parry. You can argue that you would like to channel before the raid encounter or before pulling in Mythic Plus, but that just feels very clunky to me. Lastly, the Night Fae Covenant. The Hunt is one of the abilities you gain from the Night Fae, and as you can see from the two tip, it does not seem to be finalized. This ability has underwent some changes on the beta, and the current way it reads, the 
Hunt is really a supercharged version of Fell Rush. And I will wait for final tuning to be done. Night Fate also grants you a 15 yard blink. However, that seems to pale in comparison compared to Door of Shadows that is 35 yard from the Ventia Covenant. Next, let's talk about legendaries. Before discussing each legendary, I would just like to say that versus other class tanking legendaries, the Avengers Demon Hunter ones feel really inferior. Let me explain why. Fiery Soul. Each soul fragment consumed by Soul Cleave reduces the cooldown of Fiery Brand by 2 seconds. As I briefly mentioned earlier when discussing talents, there is a very niche build that you can go for, which involves playing the talents Agonizing Flames and Chart Flash, and couple it with Fiery Soul to basically maximize the utility that you get from Fiery Brand. This could be really useful in a only single target encounter in a raid. The issue with this is for the majority of the time, for example a Mythic class, you would still be playing Spirit Bomb. And if you play the Spirit Bomb build, Fiery Soul has no synergies for it to really tap on to make it worthwhile. Resilix Defilement Soul Cleave reduces the remaining cooldown on a random sigil by 8 seconds. The fact that it is random already adds a layer of complexity that you do not like as a tank. As a tank, you want everything to be predictable and consistent. I really don't see the point in this. Next, we have Fell Flame Fortification. You take 15% reduced magic damage while Immolation Aura is active. There is definitely value in this legendary power, but I think it depends on the damage profile of the new raid encounter and the new Mythic Plus dungeons. There is a potential build where you go for this and couple it with certain conduit choices that we will discuss later that really makes you an anti-magic tank. But remember, legendaries are unique, which means that you are foregoing other legendary powers. And I do not know whether it's worth pigeonholing yourself as an anti-magic tank until we really know the damage profiles from all the content. Spirit of the Darkness Flame. Fiery Brand heals you for 100% of the damage done, and each enemy hit by your Sigil of Flame increases the instant damage of your next Fiery Brand by 15%, stacking up to 15 times. Old timers will recall that this is a very similar legendary effect to one of the legion legendaries. It was not meta back then, I don't think it will be meta this expansion either. Now let's move on to class legendaries that is available to both Havoc and Vengeance Demon Hunters. And ironically, I think our best pick is actually from this pool of legendaries. Specifically, I'm talking about Dark Glare Boon that allows Fell Devastation a 20% chance not to incur its cooldown. If you couple this with the Demonic Talent, which I suspect will be the meta build, you have a 1 in 5 chance to basically get a free metamorphosis for 8 seconds. Sure, it is chance based, but compared to the other legendaries, I think it is the front runner right now. Next, we have Darkest Hour. Automatically triggers darkness when you fall below 35%. This can occur once every 2 minutes. My problem with this is that, firstly, you can't really control when you fall below 35%. On top of that, darkness really is also an RNG spell where you have to pray to chance not to take damage. And as a tank, I like predictability, so this is not something I will go for. Half Giants Empowerment. Metamorphosis increases your size, movement speed, and melee range by 100%. This honestly just feels like a placeholder legendary that someone decided, hey, we need to create something, so let's make something up. I won't even spend time talking about this. Collective Anguish. Casting Fell Devastation summons an ally Havoc Demon Hunter who casts I Beam. It sounds useful in Mythic Plus, but when I was using it, it seemed really hard to position where it would spawn and where it would channel I Beam. There's a chance that it will completely not do anything because it's positioned wrongly, and unless they fix that, I doubt this is probably useful. Now let's move on to talk about Soulbind Conduits. Soulbinds are really covenant specific talent trees that you need to work on and conduits can be socketed into these talent trees, very similar to how relics work in the Legion expansion. Let's talk about Endurance Conduits which really enhances your defensive capabilities. I will talk about the most notable ones that are important to me. Demon Muzzle sounds great when you first read it. Seizure of Silence reduces magic damage done by 5% but it is important to keep in mind that this only lasts for 6 seconds. And I think when you compare it to Viscous Ink, which gives you a flat magic damage reduction component that scales as you level the conduit, I think Viscous Ink just have the potential to be the most valuable conduit here. Of course, I would have to keep an eye out on Roaring Fire and Shattered Restoration to see whether any more fine tuning is done. But for now, I seem to be leaning towards Viscous Ink. I want to spend a bit of time talking about Fell Defender here. As you have heard me mention in this video, there seems to be a niche build and theory craft that really 
really centers around fiery brand. So this build requires you to take agonizing flames, burning alive, and charred flash from your talent tree in order to spread and lengthen the duration of fiery brand. And then on top of that, you have to use the fiery soul legendary to reduce the cooldown of fiery brand. And you can see where this is going along with fell defender that also reduces the cooldown of fiery brand. So what this does is it allows you to set up your entire defensive toolkit around fiery brand. But the biggest downside to this is that you have to give up spirit bomb from a talent tree perspective and it feels like when you're giving up on spirit bomb you're losing quite a bit of value and i think more theory crafting needs to be done but when i tested this build on beta it did not feel as smooth as taking spirit bomb of course that is just intuition better theory crafting needs to be done but in a world where this build doesn't work i think viscous ink might be the go-to play let's talk about potency conduit which really helps you increase your throughput now most of these conduits actually tie back to the covenant you pick and as we covered in the covenant section I'm leaning towards the Ventia, which gives me increased scrutiny, it reduces the cooldown of Sinful Brand by 1 second and it scales as you level it up. For well-rounded plays in Raids and Mythic Plus, I would probably stick to this increased scrutiny conduit. There's also the Soul Furnace conduit that's available to all Covenants. Every 10 Soul Fragments you consume increases the damage of your Soul Cleave by 15%. The damage component of Soul Cleave doesn't feel like it is worth taking this conduit at the moment. I think Repeat Decree could be interesting if you're only playing Mythic Plus and you're never playing in raids. Now let's talk about finesse soul buying conduits. These are conduits that add on utility to your toolkit. I think the best is ravenous consumption. Consume magic has a 15% chance to dispel a second effect. And as you might know, when you run mythic plus, there are certain mobs that gives a stacking buff to themselves. For example, the witches in Waycrest Banner. I think having that additional purge or dispel could be really useful. Demonic peril. Enemies that live your imprison are snapped by 50% for five seconds. This could be useful for kiting purpose purposes, but I would still probably take the offensive perch. Fell Fire Haze, your movement speed is increased by 5% after casting Infernal Strike. You're one of the most mobile class out there, even without this conduit, so I would forego it. And Lost in the Darkness, Spectral Sight lasts an additional 3 seconds. This is a conduit that feels to me like someone said we must have 4 finesse so buying conduit, so go think of something. And I really don't see why anyone will ever take this. Now let's move on to some closing thoughts here. One of my biggest concerns for Vengeance Demon Hunters is how bad the loss of corruption will hurt. As you know, we are relying on corruptions like Twilight Devastation, Lash of the Void, the whole AoE threat in BFA right now. And this is worrying because the damage component from Siju of Flame and Immolation Aura does not seem to be enough to hold good AoE threat when testing it in dungeons at the moment. On top of that, they have now introduced a target cap to Soul Cleave, which further reduces your AoE output. What this does is that it funnels you to take Spirit Bomb from a talent tree perspective, but this is then harmful to the development of the spec as you cannot go for some of the more innovative builds like I covered earlier around Fiery Brand. Of course, there's a lot of time for fine-tuning before Shadowlands goes live, but this will be my top concern for Vengeance Demon Hunters at the moment. However, one of the things that I really appreciated is the introduction of Fell Devastation. It is an ability that feels really good to use, and it also functions as another form of Fury Spender. But the biggest reason why it was a great addition is because with the Demonic Talon, you can trigger Metamorphosis on demand for 8 seconds. I think this was a great change, it puts more control in your own hands and it definitely adds to the fluidity of your rotation. However, one of the things that I'm disappointed with is how the Vengeance Demon Hunter's specific legendary powers actually feels mediocre. Compared to the other tank specs, and you can look at the other videos I've done on them, it just feels like the Vengeance Demon Hunter's legendaries don't add as much to your toolkit and offers very little synergies. The fact that I'm now considering a class legendary that is a available to both Havoc and Vengeance Demon Hunters speaks volume about the design of this spec-specific legendary powers. In summary though, when I was playing the Vengeance Demon Hunter on the beta, it did feel like a class that was fun to play in Mythic Plus. I definitely felt like I was in a lot of control of whether I live or die and how fast I can pull, but the concerns that I have for the spec will carry on until I actually see how it functions in high-end Mythic Plus and Mythic Raiding. So those are things that I will definitely think about and keep in mind when I'm choosing my main. With that said, I hope everything I've shared helps you decide if you want to main a Vengeance Demon Hunter in the Shadowlands. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe. I publish daily Shadowlands content on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.